Hi everyone, my name is Craig Berry and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at Governor State University. Thank you for watching this brief video about the application process, specifically focused on the uh, early childhood ed uh, students. So let me share my screen and we'll get going. Just a second, get this going here. I apologize, I'm not that uh, facile sometimes with the technology, but I wanted to let you know that, um, you know, a little bit about Governor State. I, you know, we have, uh, we're on a 780 acre campus. It's a, a really a beautiful campus and everything is located kind of in one central building. So it makes it very easy for students to get around. So we like that about it. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, we have, uh, more than 30 graduate degrees, um, many undergrad degrees. You know, we have a very diverse faculty and a diverse uh, group of um, educational majors to choose from. So, you know, and we are, by the way, one thing that uh, I really want to highlight on, highlight on this is that we are the safest public university in the state of Illinois. Our Department for Public Safety does a wonderful job. You know, they're always very present. And the other thing that I like about them as well is that, not that this is unique to any other school, but uh, they're, because we're in kind of a small setting in terms of our building, uh, you know, there's never a DPS person more than a few minutes away from you. And if you ever need to be walked out to your car or you live at Prairie Place and you'd like to be walked there, they're always available. You just pick up a phone and they will be there in a couple minutes and, and they'll help you. So that's one of the reasons why we're so safe. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is to focus on the application process where I'm gonna talk a little bit about freshmen, transfer and graduate students. There's some commonalities. So if you can bear with me, if you're not in one of the groups, uh, you'll see that there's some things that are common to them. So for each of you, uh, freshman transfer and grad students, the, we need two things. One is your application. So if you uh, go on our website, on uh, govst.edu, under admissions, if you hover over that, the first thing you'll see is apply now. You go there, you set up an online account, and then it walks you through the application process. So whether you're a freshman, transfer, grad student, you go through the process the exact same, and it will work you through the process by you know how you uh, answer the questions. So once you've done that, the other thing we need from every group are transcripts. We need your official transcripts. So that means directly from the school, from your last school. So uh, for freshmen, that would be from the last high school you attended, the one you graduated from. If you're transferring from a community college or a four-year college and you're uh, getting your bachelor's degree, we would need transcripts from each college that you've attended and the same as a graduate student. Any college that you attended, we would need those transcripts. The, uh, and there's gonna be some supplemental documents for grad students that I'll get to in a second. Now for freshmen, the thing that I would say is uh, we do need the official transcript, as I mentioned. And uh, the other thing is when we evaluate you, uh, you need a, at least a 2.0 GPA, unweighted GPA in order to be, in order to be considered for application, for admission. Now, I would suggest, particularly if you're kind of at the lower end of that, if you're uh, below a 275, let's say, unweighted, you have the option on your application to upload any letters of recommendation from anyone, you know, a coworker, a uh, teacher, a, uh, you know, clergyman, someone in the community, anyone, you know, anyone's not your parents. Uh, we would we would love to see that. And also there's personal essays that you can you can also upload as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And those should be typed. And those can play a big role in determining that, whether or not we admit you or not. So I would suggest if you have those, to please upload them and it can do nothing but hurt or help. It can do nothing but help. Uh, also SAT scores, a ACT scores, those are totally optional. So if you feel like it would help your case, feel free to send them in. And if you're not sure, I would send them in to us as well, because I'll be honest, I'm one of the people who reviews freshman applications. And we, uh, if we see the score is low, we totally disregard it because we know that 
often the SAT or ACT scores. Uh, there's so many factors that go into that. So if someone gets a low score, we don't feel like it really says much about the kind of student they are. So we, we disregard them. Uh, if you're a student who has uh, taken some college credit and you're wondering, where do I fit, freshman or transfer? If you have completed less than 24 hours of college credit, then we would consider you a freshman. You'd fill out the freshman application. So if you are under that, then we'll actually need both your college transcripts and your uh, high school transcripts. So, but don't worry about that if you're not certain, because once we get your application, we'll let you know what we need. But if you have taken some college coursework, please send that in along with your high school transcript if you think you're going to be under that 24 credit hours. The next thing I want to talk about is, trans is the transfer process. That part, this one's a little bit easier because you still do all the same things, send in your official transcripts, do the application. But with this, we just need a 2.5 GPA and you will be admitted. Uh, I would say though, as you can see, if you're a little bit below that, you may be admitted conditionally. So if say you're, you're not hitting that 2.5, still feel free to apply and, um, you know, and then, you know, the office of, I mean, the College of Ed will review your application, decide whether they think you're a, a good fit for the program. And, you know, there may be some conditions that they put on it. So other than that, it's pretty much the same. At, at the bottom of this, uh, you can see about our transfer guides. If you, if you go on our admissions website within, geo, which, within geovst.edu, you'll see where you can link up to, we call it the Jaguar Transfer Evaluator. There's also transfer guides. Uh, say you're coming from a community college like JJC or Prairie State or Moraine Valley, we have transfer guides and we'll show you exactly how each of your courses at the uh, community college level will transfer to us. But you don't have to do that sort of thing because it's something your advisor, once you get admitted, will go over with you more in depth. The other thing that I wanted to say is uh, the graduate application. Whoops, let's get that there. The graduate application process. There's a little bit more to that. Um, you need a 2.75 GPA. Obviously, you need to have a bachelor's degree, so we need to have proof of that, but we need the transcripts from every college you went to. Also, with uh, the grad application, you will need a, uh, a resume, and you'll also need a personal essay. Sorry about that. I just lost that for a second. Uh, you'll need a resume and, and a cover letter, essentially. Uh, detailing your interest in the program and kind of what you plan to do with it, because that will go into the admissions process. Uh, so one thing I do want to let you know is that right now for freshmen and transfer students, there's no application fee. For graduate students, there are. So, but in any case, when you're doing the application, when it asks you on the second page, I believe, of the, of the application, whether you have a waiver code, just type in yes, and then put in G-S-U-N-O-W, G-S-U now, in all capital letters, that should waive your application fee. So I figure you've spent all this time listening to me. The least I can do is give you the opportunity to not have to pay the application fee. So uh, if you, once you become admitted, the next thing you do, so this is things diverge a little bit. If you're a freshman student, uh, we will send you an email once you're admitted saying, obviously at any level, we will send you an email and it will say there's been an update to your GSU application that will have your admissions letter in a PDF form when you log back into your application. We're also going to send you something physically, but if you want that piece of paper right away, that's where you can find it. Uh, now, if you're a freshman, we will also send you something about orientation. And orientation is extraordinarily important because you need to go through orientation before you can register for classes. So the way it will go is that we will send you uh, an email saying, here's how you do orientation. Orientation takes maybe 45 minutes. You don't have to do it all at one sitting, but once you get done with it, then, well, we will contact you, but we will send you information about how to contact your advisor your freshman advisor. And the freshman advisor will assist you with the registration process. So you don't have to worry about trying to figure out what classes to register for. 
uh, he or she will help you with that. If you're a transfer student or a grad student, orientation isn't a necessary part of uh, the pre-registration process, but it's still something you might wanna consider because there's a lot of valuable information. I would strongly encourage you to reach out to your advisor if you're a transfer student or a grad student, because we want to make sure that you get started on the right path. And so, uh, you know, your your advisor, who, by the way, when we when you're admitted, we will send you uh, part of that PDF that we send you that has your login to your MyGSU account, uh, you know, to your student portal. It'll also have your advisor's info on how to get a hold of him or her. I would reach out to them, set up an appointment. You can do it in person or via Zoom or over the phone, and they will help set up your study plan so that you, you can see your path to graduation. And I think that is all that I have right now. Oh, I forgot one more thing. So this is actually a very important thing. Set, uh, I mentioned how you'll get the login to your MyGSU student portal. So, you know, you've applied and you've gone through that process, you'll get a different login for your student portal. And that will be how you can access regis uh, registration, as I mentioned, how you'll be able to access Blackboard, which is, um, you know, our kind of student uh, Blackboard. Uh, and it'll also have your how you get to your email, which is extremely important, especially when it comes to financial aid because financial aid for confidentiality purposes, once you're admitted, basically sends all correspondence to that email. I know we in admissions will send stuff to your personal email because you know we're talking to people before they get admitted, but uh, that's gonna be where your professors and financial aid uh, reach out to you. And also there'll be information about events going on around the campus. So I would, uh, I would strongly suggest that you do that. You do have to submit your immunization records. So uh, those go through the registrar's office. You can email them at immunizations uh, at govst.edu. If you have questions about how to do it, you just have to upload it to something called MedProctor. And uh, if you just go on our easiest thing I always say on our website, is just go up into the upper right-hand corner, Google in immunizations. It'll get to get you to where you need to be. And like I said, the registrar's office and uh, Teresa over in immunizations. They're very helpful in terms of assisting you through that process. Uh, I mentioned orientation, making the appointment and the registering for classes. There's also a way, uh, this part at the bottom is very important too about connecting with campus resources. You know, we have a lot of resources available to you. We have tutoring available. We have counseling and wellness uh, available to you as well for both medical and emotional needs, but we also have tutoring for you as well. And uh, there's also disability services, if that is something you need. Uh, you know, And if you're not sure how to reach out to any of those people, reach out to us here in admissions. We can get you connected to that person or talk to your advisor once you're admitted. They can help connect you because we realize there's so many, so many different departments within any university. You may not know where to go for everything. So let us help you with that part. That's why we're here. Uh, and I would encourage you as well, after you're admitted, take a campus tour on, again, on in the admissions webpage, you can click on taking a tour and you can take individual tours where if you would, if you're interested in our Prairie Place student housing, you can take a, a tour of that, but you can also just take a tour of the campus itself, led by one of our student ambassadors who's there for a bunch of, for whatever questions you might have. It takes maybe 45 minutes. So uh, I think that's all I have. Make sure that I'm not, I'm not the financial person. So I just wanted to thank you for your time. My name again is Craig Berry, and you can reach me at C-B-E-R-R-Y at G-O-V-S-T dot E-D-U, or you can call me at 708-534-4492. That's the end of my part of the presentation. So I thank you again, and I hope to be hearing from you soon.